Hi everyone. It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue. Good morning. Welcome to Cricket Chat with Coffee. Um, this morning I was thinking about Mother's Day and um, I thought I remembered this box card that is from um, Mary at SVG Cuts. I have only partially decorated it, but I thought um, since y'all love box cards, uh, it, that's the feedback I've been getting, that you might like to see how this one goes together. So I'm gonna give uh, them, everyone, a couple of minutes. Good morning, Amy. I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes um, before we start putting this together so I don't have to tell everyone the same thing <laughs> over and over. Um, so good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It's Thursday morning. For me, it's like day 48 or something of, of this social isolation. I've been home. I've been at home uh, with my son only and my dogs and pig guinea piggies for the last almost 50 days. Um, yes, yes, Susan, a box card. I have so many box cards that I want to show you, but I don't want people to go, oh, all she does is box cards. <laughs> um, so if, if you, you know, maybe I should just kind of just say, oh, well, you know, that's tough. If you don't like to watch the box cards, then you can watch somebody else, I guess. But I love box cards. So, you know, I, I just love to, to make them and I love to show people um, how to do them. And it was my number one choice of um, projects when I was uh, crafting or when I was presenting at the Cricket Mountain Makeathon. So um, I just like to do this stuff. So I don't know if you guys don't mind. I like to do some some uh, a lot of box cards. There's so many. Um, this one here I crafted in uh, Cricut. The the base is Cricut. The green, my favorite green. But the um, patterns. So this pattern here here and on the back um, those patterns are from these paper uh, packs that I have talked about in the past I want to show you what I've got these came in the mail yesterday so um, some people have asked me you know about the paper that I use and yes I do use a lot of paper from like Michaels um, that like comes in a pad but the stuff that I use to embellish my crafts with most of the time comes from these types of kits or, or um, groupings. I, they call them a kit. So um, mostly I like uh, Echo Park, Echo Park Paper Company. Let me just show you. So this one here, the one I did this morning. Good morning, Emmy. Good morning, Lynn. Susan. Okay, keep the box cards coming. I hear you. So if you guys don't mind, I will continue to do box cards uh, just because I love to do it. So the one that I did this morning with the retro oven is, um, let's see, it's called I Love Spring. It's by Echo Park. I Love Spring Collection Kit, but I wanted to show you a few others. This one is called I Love Crafting. Um, and let's see what else. We've got dots and stripes. The best summer ever. I love summer. I am mom. <laughs> I probably should have used that one. Um, a nice one for 4th of July. You can hardly ever find a 4th of July one. Um, I don't know why. And then you can always find fall, but I did get this fall one. Coffee, because who doesn't like coffee, right? And uh, this is dots and stripes, mostly gingham. And then they do do some solids. Most of the kits that you get come with 12 pieces of paper there that are double-sided and usually a sheet of stickers um, i want to show you what you get in a kit i buy these wherever i can find them but they're they're not 
readily available up here in our craft store, so I have to buy them online. And um, so sometimes you can't really see what's in them, so occasionally you'll feel like, you know, maybe you got a little dud. But I love this one. I love crafting. And this is, they try to tell you what's on here. But so you, that you know, you get 12 double-sided papers. Now, what you do also get, because these are scrapbooking kits, you do also get these uh, these things that um, are called cards or, or they're embellishments, really. So, like, on one page, you get these little, little cards that you cut out. Um, and actually, Lori Whitlock, who is, helps design Echo Park, has, um, has a couple of projects that I think I'm going to try to drag out to show you um, how to use these types of cuts. So there's usually one that's, I don't know, what is that, three by five or maybe not even three by five. There's usually one like that, but the, always on the other side, there's a nice picture. So, um, so you can use the other side. And let's see, there's always one of these. Let's see, a bigger card one. And they do make nice little um, embellishments for like uh, tiny photo books, scrap type books. And then, so here's more. And this one is called I Love Crafting. And I will show you this. It says it on the bottom here, I Love Crafting. And then on the right, it says Echo Park Paper Company. So if you take these out of the packaging, um, you will still know where it came from. And what I like to do is when I'm crafting one project, I like to stay within the same uh, the same kit. So for instance, this morning's project all came from that I Love Spring one. Um, and that way the colors match. And then, then you get this page of stickers, which I am not that good about using them, but they are really cute. Like, the, you know, this mason jar, which I love mason jars, um, and then it's an old-fashioned typewriter. But I thought that I could use today, I could use these buttons um, for the side here, okay? So I didn't put them on yet because I wanted to show you the paper first. So this card is, it's a card, it's a box card. Box cards are always, um, you can fold them flat. That's the definition of a box card, but it, clearly it doesn't have to look boxy like the box card that we have done in the past. This is very boxy looking. This is sort of the traditional look of a box card, but you'll notice that people like Mary um, have taken these box cards to an extreme level. Uh, there's one that I want to show you. There's a pineapple and there's different, um, there's one she does with, that's a truck for Christmas. And, um, oh gosh, there's all different kinds and they don't really look like a teapot. She has a teapot. Actually, a teapot's in here. So this is from World's Best Mom SVG Cuts. And you can find it by typing in World's Best Mom. And it has, actually, I think it's one, two, three. She has five projects in here. This cute little card. Actually, two cards. And there's the retro box card. And what I like about Mary's printouts is that she gives you how the insert insert should be put together. So if you have and and her her cards have small pieces. So if you have a lot of small pieces and you're not really sure where things go, and that sometimes does happen, she shows you how to lay them out. Okay, and it it ends up being a process of elimination too. And then there's the teapot one, and then here's a typewriter one, which I think is adorable too. I think I want to do that one. I think that would be fun. So we're putting together this one, the retro box card. Now, um, I know I'm going to get asked, so I'm going to tell you. I So the box card, Susan, is from World's Best Mom, okay? World's Best Mom, SVG Cuts. Is this a monthly... You have okay, so Paula with SVG Cuts, they she first of all, it's run by this woman named Mary who is uh eight and a half months pregnant. So I don't know what her plans are going forward, but the way that she's always sort of done 
it is that she comes out with a new, what she calls a kit. Um, and it, it's, this is what a kit is. So you get like four or five files um, in the kit. And they usually include like, you know, a card, a box card, something 3D, that kind of thing. Um, and she comes out about every month with these kits. Sometimes she has specials where you can get the newest kit for free or one thing in a kit for free if you buy a minimum amount of her back kits like our back bundles um and sometimes she just loads them and they're brand new and you can buy them she mostly sells these as a kit but she does sell some things individually it's sort of um you know i think it's based on what she decides and again i don't know what she's going to be doing going forward but her back inventory is um mostly in kits so if you go to svgcuts.com i don't think she has a monthly subscription although she might i've just never seen it um and this is very similar to uh the way that dreaming tree which is at 3d svg but this is this is um svg cuts okay so that's it's not a monthly subscription but you just buy on their case you buy on their page okay oh the s the echo park no echo park um echo park paper company I, I don't think that they have a monthly thing if they do i don't know of it but um they're these kits i get them online these ones today these ones that i just showed you came from a company called craft direct and i believe that their url is craftdirect.com and um when you order, you get a coupon on the bottom here, and they also offer free shipping. Their prices are really good. However, they don't have the full inventory of Echo Park stuff. They also carry like Doodlebugs, which is another company um, that does these sort of kits, slightly different, but Doodlebug, um, Bella Boulevard, Carta Bl Blanca, maybe it's called Carta Blanca. Um, so Echo Park, it, I just like the style because it's sort of a Laurie Whitlock, uh, company. I don't know the association there, but no, I don't think they have like a monthly kit thing and I'm not, you know, I'm not advertising this company craft direct, but this is where I got them and the price, just so that you can see I paid, doesn't have prices on here, but I got 12 of these kits they normally go for $15 a, a pop and maybe you can find them like at Hobby Lobby or something. I don't know, but, um, but I've always bought them online and they're normally $15, which can add up really quickly because they do come up with quite a few but um at craft direct they discount them so some of them are like eight dollars some of them are ten dollars um and so i got all of these which is i think i got 12 two four six eight ten twelve kits and granted some of the kits are smaller like this this one here does not have the sticker pack and then the solids is definitely smaller if I can find the solid one. Here's the solid. But I bought the solid because I wanted to have a coordinating color scheme for the other summertime and you get six double-sided. So when you're going through and you see the prices, don't assume that the all kits are 12 double-sided with a sticker sheet. Some are uh, without the sticker sheet and some are just six double-sided so check it out okay um echo park does offer a subscription on their website lynn like at echo park paper company or echo park.com um, possibly but again these are from uh, craft direct so um, and they do have sales from time to time as well. I usually buy my paper a couple times a year and then work from it. And sometimes I take it out of the packaging and sometimes I don't. And I still haven't come up with a really great plan for it. Let's put together this box card. So as you can see, it's like a retro oven. There's a little spot in the back. I, I put it together real quick this morning. So I need to put a little tiny bit of glue here. 
So it's a box card, as I've mentioned. It has a little space in the back for either stamping or you can write your sentiment. And remember, if you're not gonna give it away and just gonna use it as a decoration, put your name in and the um, date that you made it on there. So you'll have it for the future or somebody that you know will happen upon it. Um, and then this one's really keen because it has like an open and closed front with actual an actual handle that I've embellished with these little enamel dots. Um, and then the front has sort of kind of an interesting uh, thing to show where the, where the control knobs are. And it, on the inside, there are actually like four uh, silver chrome, or what you can do chrome, silver uh, rounds with those uh, grates so that, you know, it looks like an oven. But you do have to kind of like pop them forward to in order to close it and then of course the tea kettle and the and the clock which I kind of messed up I think I'll do it differently when I, we put this one together so that's what we're putting together so the the um, majority of this box is consists of the front and the back this is the front and the back this possibly Okay, sorry. I thought I put my phone on Do Not Disturb, but I don't know why it keeps happening. But somebody keeps trying to call me. Probably a telemarketer. I apologize. So, um, so to get back, it's a front piece and a back piece. And then there are three inserts, and they are numbered. I'm going to put a little pen mark on there so you can see the number. So this one is three. That means the, it's going to go in the back. This one's two, the one that has the uh, teapot. And then one is gonna be the one in the front, right? So let's put those aside for right now. We can decorate them in a second. Let's work on this. So this is our front and this is our back. And we have to go and score at all of those, uh, all of those score dotted they're not score lines but you know the dashed lines now this is an older kit so she does not offer um for this particular kit i bet she would if we asked her but um she does not offer this separated as um as i was just talking about um the joy if it came separated you could easily uh, break it up and probably everything could be cut on the joy but you cannot unless you do a lot of finagling, and I didn't have time this morning to do that. So you cannot cut this on the Joy, but it can be cut on the Explore or the Maker. And we're going to um, upload this the way that um, the way that we've always uploaded SVGs. So again, this cannot be found in Cricut Design Space. This is an SVG that must be uploaded to design space to your version of design space i can't give you the file either because um it's proprietary so you have to purchase it if you do want to uh, make this and so the two pieces i folded all of the edges or the where the dashed lines are and i'm cutting i'm not cutting i am putting the first piece where there is a tab right here see that tab so now I have one whole piece okay so I have one whole piece whoops move out of the way guys so um, then I, I close it up the second tab here Let me move this ever so slightly okay um, so I now have a second tab here, make sure that those are really well uh, glued and you um, have lined them up. And the bottom is a little bit tricky. We're lining it up because it's not gonna like really, really line up. So you're gonna line up according to the fold. Now these side tabs get folded down like this. Yeah. Um, they And they get glued. Or you can leave them up if you want, but they don't look all of that like um, an oven if you leave them if you leave them up it's up to you what you want to do obviously so here is my basic box there you go
okay? So now we have to decorate. We can decorate the um, the outside, and then we can also do the, the um, inserts. That's what these are. I usually start with the inserts, just a preference thing. So the way that this works is that an insert always has a dashed line on the side so that it can be put inside like this. And then on the top is where you put the embellishment. Now you notice this is for the those round um, grates, I don't know, what do you call those? The burners, burners. Um, so it's only going to take half of the burner. That's so that it can fold when, and you can mail it, okay? And it can kind of sort of pop out. It's slightly different than some of the other things. Oops, and look what I did. I put glue on both sides and I don't wanna do that. I just wanna put the glue on one side. See that? Like that, you could probably put it on that way. Uh, um, or you could put the glue on here, I suppose. But I'm putting the glue on half of that burner, right? And then I'm going to take and put the, the grate on top of the burner, or the burner I, I don't know if it's a burner cover. I should learn the names. I don't have these things anymore because I have one of those glass, those glass um, ovens. But somebody who has an, uh, uh, this kind of oven with the grates, what do you call them? They're not burner covers. I don't know what you call them. All right, so here is our first um, insert and it's done and see how there's some movement here that's on purpose so let's put that one aside let's go to number two which is simply the um, adorable tea old-fashioned tea pot or tea kettle um, and you can put the glue on the back of the piece or on the actual piece itself I always just do it on the back of the piece but maybe it's just habit and remember, not too much glue. You don't want a whole big glob of glue coming out and ruining your uh, little pieces. Fold the sides. Okay, and the third one is our two burners again. So fold the sides, fold the burners, and repeat what we did with number one. This paper is actually silver on one side and craft on the other, so I have to be careful about how I put it on. So I want it to be that, that silvery look. Okay. I was gonna do the butterfly one this morning, but then I couldn't find, well, not that I couldn't find the paper. I was so entranced by the new paper that I got that I, um, I, I sort of, because the butterfly one looks like it's kind of vintagey, like with, with some real vintage paper, which I know I have, but I'm trying to find it in this mess, you know? Okay. So that's the third one. Make sure it moves. Let's decorate our outside here. So there are two there's this piece in the back, and it has this white piece, which you can stamp ahead of time if you want, or write on it ahead of time. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. Um, I probably would stamp it with something. I don't know. This would make a great little Mother's Day card, obviously, um, for someone who, you know, sort of old fashioned y. This reminds me of my aunt. Well, she's passed now, but she always had those um, aqua colored um, uh, appliances in her house. And her house actually had, it was like a, it was a cape. It was a, a cape house, style house. And it had um, the aqua, I guess it's aqua, turquoise. Maybe it's turquoise. But she always had this, and she it's just so cheery, and it reminds me of her. I wish I could give it to her, but I can't. But um, I can make it and be reminded of her, I guess. So now I'm just putting the side panels on. Yeah, you know, it kind of got me thinking about Mother's Day and mothering. Someplace, I don't know if it's Canada, 
but they call it Mothering Day, and I don't know the origin of that, but I'm, I'm thinking that maybe it might be that, um, oh, I think I'm supposed to put this here. I am supposed to put this here. Durr. That's why it's, yeah, I didn't do it on the first one. Okay, so I put this here, so when you're looking inside, you're gonna see that pattern. That's so cute. Um, anyway, so Mothering Day to me sounds like such more uh, a better name for it because Mother's Day, you know, I mean, my sister doesn't have kids, but she's a mother, man, you know, or, you know, there are people that you know that act like your mother. So, um, so I just kind of think it's a misnomer to call it Mother's Day because there are so many mothers out there and they deserve to be honored um, just as much as our moms do. So I think I'm gonna start calling it Mothering Day. So this is where, this part here, remember it folds like this, so it kind of sticks out. Sort of cute, right? So it folds like this, and that piece goes on there and we're gonna embellish it. And here's the back piece. It's actually, yeah, that makes more sense to me now that I have uh, open eyes on that, so. Okay. And then this piece is for the clock, and you can, I don't know, this, this one I, I have a hard time with because my handwriting isn't that super small, but I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put an embellishment and maybe put a 12 at the top on that. So let me do that. Really, really small, I guess. And I'll put a 6. And let's see what else we got. I think that might... Oh, no, one more piece. This piece, which you have to fold like this to give it depth, you know, to give it that 3D look. So it's going to be... This part's gonna go on there, then it kind of juts out, and then on the other side goes the opposite way. So you're creating a handle. Let's see. And there are little cut marks here. They're not really cut marks, they're just guides, right? So there's your handle, and the handle goes on here at those little circles. Now you could use a brad for this, um, and some of you, I don't have any brads right in front of me. But some of you might not know what a brad is. It's like a little, um, like working device that has two arms on it and you could put it through the hole and open up. You could use a brad for that for sure. Um, I'm going to use embellishments that I have that, that are black. This is what I have came up with. Um, gold but then I thought no that won't match and then I like this this color kind of matches but I thought let's do it for the um, for the of this clock Boy, I'm not talking well today I apologize so we'll put it on there for the clock you know you can always cut out a little element that you maybe you can find there too and then I'm gonna use the black um, for the handle on either side of the handles just looks really cute to me that black with the pink and and green just looks like really cute and then we also need to put here um, and I used like a bigger one in the middle and the small ones on this again you can use a brad you can use a button if you can find a button that small or any little embellishment a rhinestone whatever you want to do um is perfectly fine and love to see what you guys came up with whoops now these are actually got sticky on them but if you you might need to also use a little bit of glue to keep that stick there all right here we go. 
It's getting there. Now there's also on here, this little side, remember I was mentioning that, and I'm gonna use the buttons from the, where is it, the buttons? From the I Love Crafting bundle here. I'm gonna use these sticker bundle, these stickers for these little dots. But you could also use real buttons um, that you could just glue on there. Let's try this one. Oof, perfect fit. This one, I don't know if I can find a perfect fit for that one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> How do you like that? So I thought that's kind of cute. All right, so now we've got most of it embellished. All of our pieces are being used, and now we have to put in the three inserts. And you can start from the back and go forward, or you can start from the front and go backwards. It's completely up to you. I do it both ways. So today I think I'll show you how I do it from the back going forward. So I take my last piece, my third piece, and I'm gonna put glue on either tab. Fold the tabs in, and then we're going to get to make sure those burners are up. And we're going to put it flush against the inside back, okay? So here we go, flush against. And you have to make sure that it sticks with your glue. I mean, sometimes it doesn't stick and you have to go back and restick it. That's okay, just be a little patient. Because you do want it to fold if you want to maybe mail it. Leave the burners like that for right now. So the next one is our uh, tea kettle. A little bit of glue on those tabs. Fold the tabs slightly. And then this is what I do. I put the, the back of this tab to the front of the third tab like that to line it up. Check to see if it's gonna fold, it is. And then the last one, which I didn't realize when I put the original one together that I was supposed to put that, I've gotta go back and put this in here because it's really cute. Because when you open the oven, you'll see uh, this, which is really adorable and it matches that. So that's why she made this, this tab. Um, so long, okay? So put the glue, fold your burners, pop it in there, line it up. Make sure the bottom is straight so that it will fold. Hi, Roxanne, welcome. <laughs> Hi, Missy. She says, Missy says, this is adorable. It is super cute. Hi, Carolyn, Deborah, Lynn. Welcome, everyone. Paula, uh, Emmy, Wanda. Welcome. Seems like it might be your first time here. Okay, so I'm letting it dry a little bit. So when I'm getting ready to sort of show it off, you might have to fold this ever so slightly just so that it stays shut. But to show it off, you're gonna make sure you put those burners this way. And there it is, this adorable box card. Let me show you all around it. Good morning, Vicki. And that's where you would put your stamp or whatever, and there's a little embellishment. You can embellish it any way you like, obviously. If you don't wanna do it in the green, that's fine too. But look, it has a little doop. You could even maybe even put a little sentiment there. I don't know. But I just think it's so adorable. And um, I like the colors that I picked out. So it's really cute. And again, just to remind you, this came from Mary at SVG Cuts. It is part of her World's Best Mom kit. And in the kit, I don't know how much it is. Probably about seven bucks. It's older. I think it's like about five years old. Um, so you get, in addition to this one here, which is the retro oven, you also get a teapot. You get a typewriter, and those two are box cards. And then you get this, I love you, mom, or just a, no, love you, mom, which is, it's just a basic card. 
and this really adorable kind of lacy um, frame card, which you can stamp like world's best mom or something like that on there or have the kids write something. I don't know. But, um, so that is a, the SVG cuts retro oven box cards. How am I feeling today? Emmy, how am I feeling? I am, I'm tired today, uh, which is, it's unusual for me. I mean, I'm usually up at the crack of dawn. I was up at like quarter of five this morning and I'm a little tired. I think I'm going to have to go back for another cup of coffee because, <laughs> um, I'm just not moving as fast as I normally do this morning. Um, I'm a little, I think because yesterday I had to cut my hair, uh, which, you know, we could talk about. Um, I, I was really upset about, but um, today I'm like, I got to move on from this. It's just hair, you know, um, but it's weird because I've had, and I started thinking about it, I've had long hair uh, my whole adult life. The last time it was short like this is um, when I was five. My sister showed me a picture of when I was five, and I'm like, yep, that's what it looks like. And even still, um, it's it's still coming out. So I think the next step is going to be shaving. So I, I'm doing it in sort of stages. But, like, I, I washed it this morning, and I was like, oh, no. You know, even the, the parts that um, are left are coming out in droves so so that's kind of annoying but you know I know it'll grow back and I know it'll probably be lush but I have really my hair is like I'm Italian so and my father always had this thick head of hair and um beautiful black hair mine is like an auburny color and um and I know when it comes back, it's going to be white like my mom's. So um, it's like a double shock because I'm losing the hair. And then when it comes back, it's going to be white. <laughs> um, so but th that's how I'm feeling today, Emmy. I hope you're doing well, too. Um, let's see. We we made it in a half hour time frame this morning. I'm getting better at this. I don't want to keep you guys too much. If you're new and you haven't... Um, and you're just finding out about us. Um, this is the cricket chat. It's okay to feel sad about my hair. Yeah, I know. But it, it's it's so vain, too. Missy's saying, you know, it's okay to feel sad about your hair. But I just feel like it's so vain, especially now with all that everybody's going through and everything. I don't want to be vain. Um, and it is just hair, you know. And uh, so it's just, you know. All right, Susan. So Susan's going to get this file. And um, I guess I'm trying to think of what we have coming up. So today's Thursday. We've already done the umbrella um, the umbrella gift bag. And what else did we do? We did the three compartment organizer. And we did this really fun mom triptych, which you could cut on the joy. And then today we did the retro oven. Tomorrow, I'm not sure. Like to hear your feedback um, from from you as to what you'd like to see. I have a really fun um, pineapple uh, box card that I could show you. That comes from I think it's from the Boardwalk box cards from Mary, or I could show you a Laurie Whitlock. Um, actually, maybe I'll do the Laurie Whitlock one that we were going to do earlier in the week, but I couldn't get on my design space. So let's do that one tomorrow. Oh, Teresa, thank you for reminding me. Flowers. Yes. Let me show you something before I let you go. So this is something I purchased a while ago at Hobby Lobby. And we don't have Hobby Lobby, so it was just one of those rare times I went in there. It's called a flower stem kit. I don't know if they still sell this. Perhaps they do online. But these are great if you want to make flowers, particularly the daffodils, that you want to make them to last and put into a vase. So if you can get your hands on these, that might be a good thing. Let me just show you how it goes together. I actually bought a whole bunch of them. So it has these stems that are bendable. Uh, which really can uh, make it look realistic. See, so it's real bendable. You can actually cut them, I suppose. Maybe you can go 
in half or fold them. It's up to you. But the, um, the flower is made or put together by this, these three pieces. Here's sort of the, I don't know what you call that, the part where the flower comes out of. That's one piece, that's two piece, that's three piece. Okay, so what you do is you put the flower in between these two pieces, you see? And then you take this piece and you screw it on. Wait, I'm doing it, am I doing it right? No, this side. Okay, you screw it on and you'd be putting your flower in there I just thought this was so genius, so I wanted to show you. I don't know. I hope I'm not telling you to go get something that's not available anymore. So, And then you take the stem and put it in like that. Isn't that really fun? If you can't find something like that, we can do uh, dowels, and we can also do... Um, what's the word? Uh, the wire. We can also do the wire. wire. Flower punch board. Oh, okay, so I guess, I, you know, I don't use the punch boards all that much. I have a couple, but um, so this is how you'd make the flowers on the front then, Pat, I guess. It looks to me like, and then you can create these stems. But they're bendable and, and they're really kind of poseable. So if you, for instance, are making flowers for, I don't know, for an event, and you need, you need them to look really professional or you need them to stay put or something like that, this would be a really good thing to have. And they're easy to take apart and reuse. I've done that before. I've made like daffodils and then I made peonies and then I made poppies and I used the same kit. So I was able to like swap them out um, you don't put any glue on it, and it does take a bit to, to take off, of course. But, but um, yeah, they're reusable. And so when you're done with that particular season or event, you can do that. So see, there's the, what do you call this part? I don't know that part. It's not the stamen. Somebody told me, my my craft, my garden friend told me. But it, it's really cool. And then you actually put the inside of the... Um, Amazon. Thank you, Wendy. Um, I need to learn how to print and cut from start to finish. Pat, print and cut we're going to do. We are definitely going to do because I have a number of print and cut projects that are just like little embellishments, but I found this awesome, um, this awesome project from Lori Whitlock that actually has print and cut embellishments. And I also found something in design space from Anna Griffin that's print and cut box cards. So we are going to do that. It's on my list um, of how to do print and cut. And um, it is it is simple. You're going to be like, oh, that's it. You know, it, it's not it's not that difficult to do. Um, and the machine does most of the work for you. So you really don't have to do much of anything except load the paper. So that is, that is that. So we're going to be working on flowers for sure, Teresa. Um, and I wanted to just kind of let you guys know about these, these stems. Otherwise, we can use a dowel that we can decorate with some floral um, paper. Like it's a stretchy, semi-sticky paper. So, but I wanted to let you know about these because I found them yesterday. And so flowers, print and cut. And then on Saturday night, we'll be live um, here on Facebook at 7 o'clock. And um, we are doing the Peony gift box. And that is, I'll put the link in the um, description of this video. But it's from Dreaming Tree, which you can find at 3dsvg.com. It's called the Peony gift box. It has a beautiful peony flower on the front. Um, and then it's, it's a, I think it's a hexagon box really beautiful construction on the box so we're going to be doing that uh together on saturday night okay um oh yes very good what do i call what amy what do i call what 
Yeah, I think paper flowers are perfect for people in nursing homes. Oh, the stem kit. It's called, it's by We Are Memory Keepers, and it's called the Flower Stem Kit. It has 10 wire stems and 10 of the mechanism, plus you get a roll of tape. I haven't used that. And a little roll of wires. I think that that's for leaves. If I'm not mistaken, yes. See right here, it's for attaching a leaf. So if you cut a paper leaf, you can do that. And my daffodil, um, my daffodil project does have some leaves on it. And I'm thinking, does the peony one have leaves? It might, I might. Uh, the big, big peony one may have leaves. I think the one that comes from um, SVG Cuts has leaves too. So you could use that or you don't have to. Obviously, you can just put it in your hoard. So, okay, so that's it for today, folks. Um, and I'll be back tomorrow. And I'm gonna try to maybe do, let's do the, you know what? Let's do the oversized peony tomorrow because then that will be a good um, work up to the peony gift box. How does that sound to everyone? We're going to do the oversized peony. Let me grab it. This is a um, Cricut Design Space file. The peony gift, no, not the peony gift box. The oversized peony, and we'll do this. Okay, Emmy. Yeah, you can definitely play with the sizing. Just um, make sure you do it all together, stacked, because you want to make a, a, a you want to make you want to make all the changes be um, equal. If that makes sense. Proportionate. So this is the oversized peony. So we can do that, the one that's in design space tomorrow. And then on Saturday night, we'll do the peony. It's a different design, but it's still all these wonderful. Um, so for this, Teresa, I forget, Teresa, what machine do you have? Um, this would need to be cut on probably on the explore or maker because the size leaves are but although you can make them smaller um but the, i made this oversized so what size paper probably 12 by 12 and it's actually i don't know if you can see it but it's actually two different color pinks and yellow so you need to find one two three four five six sheets of pink whatever colors you choose um and one sheet of yellow okay and yes, Air 2, you could cut this on the Air 2. And it is a Cricut, so it's free. If you're an Access member, it's a Cricut file. So we'll do this tomorrow, okay? And we'll see you all tomorrow. You know where to reach me if you need to. My email is misreadedtotherescue at gmail.com. Um, or I'm online at Facebook. Um, and also my YouTube channel, Miss Rita to the Rescue. Thanks so much, everyone, for coming today. And we'll see you all again tomorrow at 9. Bye. Thank you, Wendy.